And um, that's how we've created all these great tools to support South Africans on the journey of home ownership. Right. I think it's important for our country and um, we really encourage the market to really take that step, think about it. Now is the time. I think the, the environment's really favorable. Mm. Welcome back to the First Time Home Buyer Show. I'm your host, Esti Klassen. As you heard tonight, I'm sitting with the wonderful Zyda Manuel, all the way from APSA. But before we get started, as you know, we've got amazing content coming to you live every weeknight this week. We've got Zaman Tung Guacamalo with the Private Property Podcast. That's live on Facebook and YouTube at 7 p.m. from Monday to Friday. And of course, Mbali comes to you with the Agriculture Podcast. That's Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. We cannot miss Chad. Viveros as he travels around Mzanzi, looks at amazing mansions, townhouses, apartments, all the way in Johannesburg. That is Friday and Monday evening. Start off your week with a bang with Chad at 8 p.m. And of course, I come to your screens every Wednesday at 8 p.m. And tonight is no different. I'm chatting to, like I said, Zyda Manuel. All the way from APSA, we talk about how we can make your home ownership journey easy and the digital platforms that APSA has done and taken into consideration to make this process easy for us. Good evening, Zyda. How are you? Evening. Evening, SD, and thanks for having Thank me so today. Much. We've been wanting to sit down and have this conversation. I remember having a chat with you at one of our panel discussions, and we wanted to talk, you know, just about how the access to even getting a home loan, you know, being a young woman of color in South Africa, all of these things. But we'll get to that a little bit later, Zaida. I want to talk a little bit about getting, applying for a home loan. Let's start from the beginning and take us through the entire process. Thank you, Essie. Evening, everybody. I think from applying for a home loan is really a big decision, especially if you're a first time buyer. Um, what you really need to consider and start preparation is understanding your budget. Mm -hmm. Understand, can you afford a home loan? So you really need to look at what are your income, what are your expenses. Secondly, you need to have a good understanding of your credit, credit history. So understand your credit bureau profile. You are eligible to retrieve a credit report um, annually from one of the credit bureaus like TransUnion or Experian. And then you need to also consider doing a pre-qualification. Um, EPSA has a great tool that can help you with a pre-qualification to determine how much you can afford mm -hmm. from, a, from qualifying for a bond. Thereafter, you need to then assess what are some of the attorney costs associated to the home buying process. Mm -hmm. There's bond registration cost, there's initiation fees, there's transfer attorney cost. And check if you have enough savings to pay for those costs. Mm -hmm. Also consider, you know, new expenses coming into your budget, such as insurance that has to be, that you have to take up as part of the home buying process. Mm. Uh, check levies, what are some of the levy expenses depending on the property type you'll be buying. Rates and taxes, mm. the once off electricity costs to get that onto your name once you've purchased your home. And then of course, moving costs. You know, what would be your moving costs uh, once you're ready and you're approved for a home loan? Um, and thereafter, you can then, once you've got a, a quali quali pre-qualification of what you can afford, you can then start shopping around, search on private properties website for that yeah. property that you're looking mm. for and different suburbs as well. Right, and I think it's so important because I'm sure to a lot of first time home buyers, or even people who are just looking into buying property now, a lot of young people who've watched the first time home buyer show, probably all those terms and all those steps that you mentioned, they probably had no idea this existed. There were one or two that I was mm. like, oh, I need to do that, <laughs> you know? So I think it's very important and I love that you gave yes. that almost in bullet form. Yes. And I think it's so pivotal for us as the younger generation to take notes of this and go and do further research on these terms. Um, but today we're going to try and go deeper into this, which I really would like us to do, Zaida. We spoke about one of your first things was check your budget. Yes. And we spoke about this just a little bit before. And I think it's so important because you, you kind of preach that there are certain things that we can just exclude from our budget, you know, certain lifestyle changes that we need to actually change. So how do we go about some advice from you, how do we go about actually working better with our budget, being financially savvy? I think guidance is always to look at your income and what are your expenses and 
assess expenses that are really required versus some luxuries mm -hmm. and see where you can really um, minimize you know but I think taking time to assess your expenditure and spending time is very important mm -hmm. it's a very difficult task to do but um, you have to do it I think it's very important because you need to in your budget you need to ensure that you've got expenses allocated according to what's really necessary there are some luxury items and then always make room for savings for that time when you might really need an emergency and you have that accessible and i think part of buying a home is you know there would always be some kind of emergency whether right. it's a repair of a home or some <coughs> renovations or some um, unexpected it costs and and you always need to make sure that you have room for all of that mm. once you are a homeowner as well mm. um, and I think really assessing your budget is actually very very important so I really encourage mm. you to assess your budget and check the income and expenses yeah. as well and look if you're not geared and ready to purchase the home right now after you've assessed your budget start looking at how can you um, downsize decrease expenses so that you can work towards the goal of home ownership and and I think that's really really important and encouraging from my side as guidance um, in terms of preparation towards mm -hmm. home ownership I, I, and you're right it is scary to just you know to assess that budget and make these lifestyle changes because to some people you know it could be like a drastic change that we need to make or some people are just like but I can't afford to make that change just yet yeah. um, but I think it's important to assess the budget I mean I'm gonna leave you and go do the exact same thing because it is <laughs> now is the right time even just before this we were talking about how it's such a perfect time to buy right now right but we, I want to get to that later another one of the steps that you mentioned Zaida was um, doing the whole pre-qualifying step first. Yeah. How important is that step before the final? I think it's very important because I think having an understanding of what you could qualify for gives you the confidence to shop around. So like I've mentioned, APSA has a great tool. It's available on our website. Um, it's accessible on our website for everybody to use. It's called the APSA Home Loan Estimator tool. It's our pre-qualification tool. Um, easy steps to uh, insert some of the fields required for you to determine what you could afford uh, from a home, from a bond qualification perspective. It gives you an estimate and you are able to, to, to do that estimate up to five times within a 90 day period. Um, and that can help you shop around um, and to see what you could qualify for. It helps you with your search process, mm -hmm. you know, different suburbs, different price ranges, and then you can start uh, searching confidently mm. for properties and starting having the engagement process to view properties and I think that really gives you good guidance as to what you can afford mm. um, and I encourage I encourage everybody to go and do a pre-qualification as mentioned ours is available on the APSA website mm. and we'll give you a certificate with what you could qualify for after you've inserted all your necessary um, information and you can happily go and shop around yeah. um, for the property you're looking for and you can start by searching on private properties website and I think it's so important because once you have that figure you know exactly what you're looking for yes. and that's when you can play around especially as first-time home buyers do you want it you can even keep below that figure you yes. know and if it's maybe your first home or family home also again what's so important especially with first-time home buyers is the intention of buying whether yes. it's investment purposes or if it's your home home you just spoke about that you know that's a, a good way digitally and a lot of younger people are always on their phones yes. always you know going through all the apps and it's just easily accessible you know this thing yes. this phone so how has apps uh, helped us especially digitally um, make this process so much easier for first-time home buyers oh great I think you know with the world evolving mm -hmm. digitally mm -hmm. transforming all industries has to really adapt to this digital world that yeah. we transform into and we've got to evolve so APSA has great digital tools that can help you towards the buying process it's our pre-buying tools once again it's available on our APSA website and it's accessible to everybody we have the pre-qualification tool as mentioned to help you shop confidently we then have a great tool which is an e-learning tool okay. that teaches you about home ownership all the ins and outs about home ownership it's our apps and my home owner journey tool it's f it's a free tool you access the tool and you can actually learn about home ownership the buying process 
type of properties, type of lending facilities, insurance solutions, the attorney processes, the deeds office processes, mm -hmm. and the different type of properties that you can be interested in purchasing, as well as the buying process, such as what is an offer to purchase. Right. You know, what are some of the next steps during the buying process? So it's a really great, great e-learning course that I encourage everybody to actually um, access, register on our website, go through the course. It's really, really, really great and helpful. And then the final exciting one is that <laughs> in order to submit your home loan application, we've got an online digital sales process mm -hmm. and you can actually log on Complete your a home loan application in under 15 minutes. Oh, wow. It's simplicity, it's speed, and you can submit your application and get an outcome. Mm. You can do it at, with, uh, with any device, on your tablet, on your mobile, on your laptop, and I think that's the beauty part of where we are from a digital perspective. Right. We've really made it very easy simple, and convenient yeah. and simple to access. Mm. Also, we've got great calculators on our website also to help you calculate some of your bond attorney costs especially after you've done the pre-qualification tool. It gives you an indication of what could some of those costs be. And you can work around and play around with different price ranges so that you can determine, you know, right. what is your budget once again mm. and what you can afford and what, is, what does that look like if you have to take into account interest um, rates and taxes, right. levies, uh, insurance as well. We've got great insurance, mm. insurance solutions too. Mm. So all these digital tools are available on our website to help first time buyers prepare for that home ownership mm. journey. We spoke about the e-learning tool and earlier, remember I said a lot of the jargon you used was, could be foreign to a lot of people, but having this option as the e-learning, it literally teaches you in depth all of these terms and terminologies that you might come across on your home ownership journey, which is so important. I love that that we have that, you know, easy right here on your phone, online. And under 15 minutes, that's absolutely amazing. Yes. It's, you know, with the times, keeping up with the times, yes. I love that. <laughs> Especially, I think, Esti, mm. we really try to transform digitally mm. and we're really trying to make it convenient and reassuring the market that we have the right tools to help you on this mm. important journey. Mm. You know, our pre-buying tools are there, it's accessible to everybody. You don't need to be an APSA customer right. to access the tools, learn and prepare for your journey. And we've made it so much easier where you can actually go and complete your own application and mm. submit it and wait for and get an outcome. It's, mm. it's as simple as that. From the comfort of your home exactly. on any device. Exactly. And I think that's really digitally transforming right. this journey. And that's the journey we've invested in and we really want to support first-time buyers in this regard mm. to really reassure them that we are here, we want to walk the journey with you, mm. um, as you as you take this important decision as buying a home. Exactly. I just wanted to say that even though you know we're in the midst of a pandemic and things are done virtually, you're still holding our hand, yes. not physically, but through the process, Absolutely. which I love. Um, Zaida, uh, talking about first-time home buyers, and I know even within my own circles, a lot of people, young adults, are buying property. Yes. For the first time. Yes. These first time home buyers are just the numbers are expanding and it's just an influx of all of them. And I love that for us. What are the current trends that you are seeing from your side with regards to first time home buyers? How is there an influx? What's happening in your, on your side? Wow, I think you rightfully mentioned, even though it's a pandemic, we've mm. really seen increase in the property market from an activity perspective, which is really great. We have the lowest interest rate in years. It's 3% mm -hmm. down since July 2020. And I think that really makes it a very favorable environment to encourage uh, you know, consumers to, to consider home ownership. You know, some are probably renting and wants to, to, to move towards owning their own property. Mm. And I think that's really encouraging. Some are buying um, a home for the first time in their families, yeah. you know, for themselves, for the extended family. And that's really encouraging. The, the, the environment's favorable. And also to add, I think um, transfer duties are exempted right. for uh, properties less than a million yeah. rand. And I think that's a real saving for first time buyers. Mm. And I think that's really encouraging for mm. the market at this point in time and we have really seen a good increase in activity mm. from first-time buyers in the market and it's really exciting and yeah. I think um, you know it's really great that uh, we can be the bank to support 
uh, you know, and to be a part of that home ownership yeah. uh, in South Africa as a society and play that role, I think it's very important. Mm. And um, that's how we've created all these great tools to support South Africans on the journey of home ownership. Right. I think it's important for our country and um, we really encourage the market to really take that step, think about it. Now is the time. Mm. I think the, the environment's really favorable mm. and um, we encourage we encourage you to take the step towards home ownership. Mm, there's no better time than now. Absolutely. You've said it really well. <laughs> I wanted to find out, so we, we obviously, you know, we've seen that a lot of new people are buying property right yes. now, but are there other trends maybe from, especially with regards to first time home buyers that you are seeing? So what we also seen is that, look, I think we've seen a, an increase in, in women playing a role in the market. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of activity from mm -hmm. first time buyers. Like I said, you want to own a property. You don't necessarily, uh, you know, you're moving from renting to owning. The time is favorable. So we're really seeing that, um, uh, that activity in the market at this point in time, which is encouraging. Um, I think different suburbs, um, you know, sometimes you'd have thought that I could never afford a, a property in the in, suburb, yeah. but with the rates being relatively low, the lowest in, in years, yeah. I think, you know, sometimes you can, you can actually afford a property in a different suburb where you actually thought that you mm. couldn't. And I think that's really encouraging. Right. And that's why I think that the market has really turned uh, very favorably. Uh, in the property industry, mm. um, even if though it's a pandemic, but yeah. I think it's encouraging during mm. this time, you know, for consumers, really South Africans to consider home ownership. Mm. So those are some of the key things we've seen. And, um, and I think that it's exciting. I think it's exciting, you know, as young adults to take the step that, on the journey. Yeah. And like I've mentioned earlier is that, you know, for some it's their first time purchasing a property in their families you know, they've exited university, single moms wanting security right. for their kids. So it's it's a really amazing mm -hmm. um, to see some of these 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 lifestyle changes, right. but in a positive light mm. and, and making home ownership is really something big and it's exactly. exciting and it's important as well. A little yeah. bit of everyone is, you know, yes. you're seeing kind of trends along. Absolutely. Every, I love that. Um, Zaida, we spoke, I mean, we don't often get to speak to, yes. you, you know, someone from APSA. And first time home buyers often have a lot of questions when yes. it comes to getting money from the bank and being qu and qualifying for this home <laughs> loan. Um, I wanted to know, like, maybe just a few, like, frequently asked questions that you've gotten from first time home buyers. Yeah. And maybe if you can use this opportunity to answer them as well. So I think a lot of a lot of the times we we get that oh I don't know where to start yeah. and like I've mentioned the starting point is look at your budget yeah. understand your income your expenses is there room for you to actually afford a bond repayment yeah. then go and and look at and look at see, see what you can afford mm. you know and once you have those two things then you can start shopping around but it's also important that to understand your credit history. Because right. if you have s certain things that are not favorable, you can try to sort those out before you embark on the journey of home ownership. Mm. Um, and you can also learn about the journey of home ownership. Right. And that's why we've got our great tool mm. that you can learn about this process. And I think other things that's important um, to consider as well is, you know, when you start searching for a property, there's, there's certain things that you need to, to consider. So as you shop around, view properties in certain suburbs on a Sunday, right. have a look at volume of traffic, have a, have a feel of how does that, how does that look in, in, in certain suburbs right. that you might be interested in. Then understand, you know, these suburbs, do they have good transport networks? Is there good amenities? Is there schools, shopping centers close by, hospitals? Mm. Also understand that, look, we work at, some of us are working from home, so fiber connectivity is important. important yeah. and, and I think also what's something else also is the security, you know, the suburb uh, security. Um, if you're buying in a sectional title property, understand the levy costs, right. what, is, what is associated to that. And then just overall the suburb, understand is it a suburb that's growing in value, property value. You can get property reports. Yeah. You can access that from private properties website <laughs> to help you understand, and have an understanding of some of the suburbs that you might be interested yeah. in. So those are some of the things that I can actually give guidance on mm. as to consider as a first time buyer mm. when you start searching for your property right. and as you prepare for this journey. My biggest question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is the negotiation thing you know everyone says no you can negotiate 
we can now how far can i take it how far can i push this negotiation so i think um, as you engage with maybe estate agents right. or or the actual uh, if it's a pre-owned property or mm. a developer mm. you know see what's the costing of price range how far you can negotiate i think it's a good adult conversation yeah. and then you take it from there i think look it's how you establish that rapport and, and what are you looking for. I think it's also important to understand what you're looking for. And yeah. that's why I say the preparation, there's a lot of preparation. Mm. Understanding the suburb, the type of property you're interested in, what is important to you to have in the property, right. you know, a fiber, um, security, mm. you know, um, and those are key things to understand. And as you go on your search and you look for the, in different suburbs and different property types that you're looking for, whether it's mm. sectional title, estate living, goodbye a freestanding property yeah. and with freestanding property you consider some of the other additional security considerations like an alarm system electric right. fence etc and i think those are some of the things that um, you need to you can you can once you have a good understanding of what you're looking for as you enter into to to engage with estate agents you then can do the negotiation mm -hmm. around costing and and price ranges and what you could put in and offer for right. to if you are interested in a property that you've mm. seen and then you can then go ahead and start uh, doing the preparations that are around signing and offer to purchase right. with the respect of uh, either it's a pre-owner or the mm. estate agent or the developer and then uh, you wait for the outcome right yeah. I like how you said it's an adult conversation. It's an adult conversation. <laughs> uh. You know, you need to put on your big old hands. <laughs> the next question, Zaida, yeah. is, you know, I have so many questions on this. I feel like for, for the next question, this topic needs its own show and <laughs> it needs a whiteboard and it needs to be literally we need to dive deep into it it's yes. flisp yes. and i have so many you know i've even searched and a few um gotten a few questions from uh, friends and family members who have obviously done more research you know yeah. and one of the most important questions before i even ask that question maybe you can explain flisp um yeah. and why is the form so long <laughs> <laughs> why so i think i think let's start with what flisp yes. is so the government really uh, introduced FLIS back in 2012, the Department of Human Settlements, as a government f housing subsidy to support home ownership and carry home ownership for first time buyers. Mm. It's a, a subsidy for income earners that earns below uh, 22,000 Rand. Right. Um, also, what, what's important is that you've got to be a first time buyer mm. and you must have not benefited from previous uh, housing subsidies. Okay. You need to be over 18 mm -hmm. and you need to have a home loan approval from a bank, bank yes. before you submit your FLISP, FLISP. application. Okay. It is a separate application to that of your home loan application. Mm -hmm. So you really need to first get a home loan approval and thereafter okay. you need to, you need, then need to um, uh, gather your documents for the FLISP submission right. of application. The form is long. Mm -hmm. The criteria really is for for the for, for uh, to as the first is to assess your income, yeah. your expenses, because it is a subsidy granted to you based on your salary income on a scale perspective as well. Right. And the subsidy is really there to assist you either through a deposit or to help you reduce the outstanding balance on your home loan. Mm. And um, the vetting process is intense, so you've got to submit really key documents as yeah. part of the application process, like your pay slips, your bank statements. Yeah. If you have beneficiaries that you're taking care of, an affidavit, mm. your ID, your proof of your home loan application, right. and you submit those, and uh, you can submit it to the National Housing Finance Corporation. Mm. You can visit their website. They've got great information about what the FLISP yeah. is. And they're really good at um, taking in applications right. and sharing the outcomes. And that's really FLIS when it's, it's, it's an encouraging tool to, to support. It's an mm -hmm. encouraging um, tool. I call it a tool to support yeah. first time buyers. Yeah, and um, I really think that a lot of South Africans, um, we, we speak about it, but it's, it's something that's still very vague. A lot of people don't understand it. Yes. But at EPSA, we really try to advocate and we really um, educate our, 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 yeah. our consumers and our customers actually about what FLISP is, because mm -hmm. I think it's important. I think it's a really really nice tool 
that the government has introduced to support first time home store buyers, home yeah. ownership for first time buyers. And you're right, a lot of people don't know about yes. this and that's what's so shocking to yes. me because you know I'm out there all the time and I'm like, guys, but there's flisp and they're like, huh? <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, no, we can do this. Yeah. As first time homeowners, we can do this. And yes. so the biggest question from a lot of the people in my circles is, is it so, is it something I have to pay back? The mm. or like what happens after so that? So once once the applic FLIST application is assessed and you receive an outcome, you if the outcome is positive, where the subsidy is granted to you based on what you've submitted, it then gets paid um, over towards your home loan, mm -hmm. whether it's in form of a deposit right. or to reduce your outstanding balance. You never, you don't pay the government back for the money, <laughs> right. but it's really to assist you with your home ownership journey, mm -hmm. and. Um, and that's actually what the FLISP is for. Mm. So um, banks have partnered with the, uh, with the, the government, government yeah. to ensure that we really try and speak and do thought leadership about FLISP government subsidy. And we work with mm. uh, the Department of Human Settlements and government to support uh, the advocacy of FLISP and to encourage it for first time buyers that, are qu that qualify for the FLISP subsidy as well. And they obviously do their own calculations to determine you know how much yes. one is going to qualify for when absolutely it comes to absolutely and that's why i say it's a separate application right. banks cannot tell you what you can get mm. you submit your separate application like i said to the national housing finance corporation mm. they will assess your application and they will mm -hmm. share an outcome with you with what you've submitted to them right yeah okay perfect yeah. thank you so much zaida i think flisp is very important everyone watching the show go try and do your own research on this and understand that like zaida like you said you are there to help us and you're encouraging people around yeah. um, you know whether they doing the home loan through apps, so you're encouraging them to actually look at FLISP. Yes. I know it is a hefty form. That is what I opened with. It is quite a hefty form. But take the time and fill it out. And yes. you, like you said, it's a lot of personal documents that's needed. And I think the biggest thing about first-time home buyers is that, that beginning process, that start. It's all the documents. It's all of this, all this information needed. As soon as that's over, it's, I'm not going to say smooth sailing because I don't want to sell dreams, but it's almost easier. Um, yeah. The first process is really just a lot of documentation and filling out all of these things. I mean, you know, we just heard a story about someone who's still trying. It's been two weeks. They're still filling out the documents. So I think just take that step and fill out those documents. Do your research. Zaida, just before we close off, um, again, still let's focus on the first time home buyers. Apps obviously offers numerous things. So let's talk a little bit about the offerings that you offer to first time home buyers. Great. So it's see we've got great uh, off, we have got great solutions for first time mm -hmm. buyers. We've got um, for our digital, we've got a great exciting digital uh, uh, solution for our first time buyers where you can submit your application online mm -hmm. and you could be eligible. Uh, you could qualify for a UPS subject to your home loan being approved. And this offer is exciting. It ends on the 31st of January, 2022. So that's okay. quite exciting. Mm -hmm. And then we've got our My Home proposition where we, uh, for income earners below 26,000 Rand, 26,100, we offer them a 50% discount on attorney costs. Mm -hmm. You eligible to all our sol insurance solutions. We can also do a financial um, uh, assessment for you through our financial consultants that can mm -hmm. assist you with understanding your financial status as well as giving you guidance around how to financially get fit from a needs analysis perspective. We then also, um, you're also eligible to get a free uh, home ownership training course, which um, you go through to to teach you more ins and outs of home ownership. Mm. And then we've got a young professional solution for our young professionals out there. You can get a loan to value of up to 105%. You could use the additional 5% for, uh, for your costs that you might need to pay for properties under 1.5 million. Oh, wow. You get a 30% bond ridge discount there. We also give you access to all our solu insurance solutions mm -hmm. um, that is accompanied with um, with buying a house, you know, you need homeowner structure insurance, right. you need um, content cover to, to cover your content in your home. And then of course, we really encourage the market to always take up a life insurance that's seeded yeah. to, 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 to your home loan so that in case of 
anything that might happen in case in event of death or terminal illness or disability, the outstanding home loan balance can be settled, subject to that the, the, the life insurance value is covered for the entire home loan value as well. And I think that's very important. Yeah. Uh, we also can draft wills <laughs> so that you can leave your asset to right. a beneficiary as well. And I think um, we've got access to all the other great solutions such as um, great transactional accounts, check accounts as mm. well. And um, you can get additional APSA rewards as well for being a homeowner. Yeah. And um, we've got a, we're a full bank. We offer full solutions and we've got everything there that can mm. support you on your home buying journey on your looking for insurance solution, look at, looking for estate and wills, mm. financial planning. And I think that's really important where you can get everything in one place right. as you embark on the important journey of home ownership mm. as well. So we've got all these great solutions mm. to support first time buyers. Exactly, and with everything that you've said, you're supporting yes. first time home buyers before the process, yes. during the, the process, process, and after. after the process. Right. Absolutely. I love that. You spoke about a lot of different types of insurance yes. that one needs, yes. especially for first time home buyers. If we could use a few moments just to educate. Uh, those watching at home about the different types of insurances. Yeah. Is that the word? Insurances? That customers need yeah. when yeah. purchasing their home. So I think when you're purchasing your home, firstly, you have content that's in your home, mm -hmm. like your t appliances, mm -hmm. and you'd want to insure those. So we have home content insurance cover that we mm -hmm. can offer you. We have then homeowner's comprehensive cover, which is your structure insurance associated to your home, which is important to take up as, which is accompanying the purchasing of your home. And then there is um, life insurance, which needs to be ceded to the home loan, mm -hmm. so that um, in case of death or disability or terminal illness, the bond can be paid up, the outstanding mm -hmm. balance can be settled, but that is subject to that the, the life insurance that you've taken out and ceded to APSA home loans does cover the full outstanding home loan balance mm -hmm. so that your beneficiaries are not left uh, with a surprise. Right. They are then covered in that event. And like I say, drafting a will is very important as mm -hmm. well. You'd want to leave your asset to a beneficiary. And I think we've got all these solutions to support you, mm -hmm. um, as, you as you embark on, on home ownership. ownership yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, Saida. If you can just let us know as we end off, how easy is it to apply for a home loan at APSA? Well, let's visit our website and our home loans page to access all our digital tools, our pre-buying tools, and submit your home loan application online. Access our digital sales application tool complete your application and submit it in <laughs> under 15 minutes and you can get a home loan um, outcome. Right. I think our, apps, our, our, our home loans website has all our tools available. It's accessible to everybody. And I encourage you to make use of our pre-buying digital tools mm. um, as well as do the pre-qualification, learn, uh, take our e-learning course and submit your home loan application online and get an outcome. And that is everything available to you. Right. And that's how you can get hold of us at APSA Home Loans. And it really is that simple. Yes. Before we close off, Saida, I'm gonna ask you very nicely to take off your APSA hat quickly. Okay. <laughs> Just for two seconds. Okay. Just please take off your APSA hat. My yeah. question is, I'd love for you as Zaida Manuel to yes. give first time home buyers advice um, who are doing it for the first time. It's a daunting yeah. experience and they are so afraid. Yeah. Some advice from you, please, Ida. The biggest, the guidance I'll give is that please assess your budget. Mm -hmm. Understand your income, your expenses. Secondly, understand your credit profile. Mm -hmm. Understand your status and retrieve a free credit report from the bureau, such as Experian and TransUnion, you are eligible for one annually, okay. and understand your credit history. And I think those two in t together is important to understand, can you actually afford a home loan or not? Right. And um, I think that's the starting process. And then make use of the tools that we have available mm. on our APSA website to help you prepare. Zaida, you just went ownership. and put the APSA head back on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Zaida, for taking the time out and sitting with us and explaining how simple and easy APSA has made this home ownership journey process. Thank you so much. To everyone at home, don't forget, we still want to hear your story. If you have a first time home ownership story to share with us, what it was like going through the process, send us a message on Instagram 
or Facebook and we'll be in touch. Take care, stay safe. See you guys again next weekend, live at 8 p.m. Take care.